NASA wants to send humans to Venus, and here's why that's a brilliant idea. Gareth Dorlin and Ian Whitaker from The Conversation. This is on phys.org. Popular science fiction of the early 20th century depicted Venus as some kind of wonderland of pleasantly warm temperatures, forests, swamps, and even dinosaurs. In 1950, the Hayden Planetarium at the Natural History Museum in New York City, of course, were soliciting reservations for the first space tourism mission well before the modern era of Blue Origin, SpaceX, and Virgin Galactic. All you had to do was supply your address and tick the box for your preferred destination, including Venus. Today, Venus is unlikely to be a dream destination for aspiring space tourists, as revealed by numerous missions in the last few decades. Rather than it being a paradise, the planet is a hellish world of infernal temperatures, the corrosive toxic atmosphere and crushing pressures at the surface. Despite this, NASA is currently working on a conceptual manned mission to Venus named the High Altitude Venus Operational Concept, but uh, HA uh, Havoc for short. Now, uh, now is, uh, but how is this such a mission even possible? Temperatures on the planet's surface about 460 degrees Celsius are in fact hotter than Mercury, even though Venus is roughly double the distance from the Sun. This is higher than the melting point of many materials, including bismuth and lead, which may even fall as snow onto the higher mountain peaks. The surface is a barren rocky landscape consisting of vast plains of basaltic rock dotted with volcanic features and several continent-scale mountainous regions. It's also geologically young, having undergone catastrophic resurfacing events. Such extreme events are caused by the buildup of heat below the surface, eventually causing it to melt, releasing heat, release heat, and re-solidify. Certainly a scary prospect for any visitor. And hovering in the atmosphere. Luckily, the idea behind NASA's new mission is not to land people on the inhospitable surface, but to use the dense atmosphere as a base for exploration no actual date for the Havoc-type mission has been publicly announced yet. This mission is a long-term plan and will rely on small test missions to be successful first. Such a mission is actually possible right now with current technology. The plan is to use airships, which can stay aloft in the upper atmosphere for extended periods of time. As surprising as it may seem, the upper atmosphere of Venus is the most Earth-like location in the solar system. Between altitudes of 50 kilometers and 60 kilometers, the pressure and temperature can be comparable to regions of the Earth's lower atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure in the Venetian atmosphere are at 55 kilometers is about half that of the pressure at sea level on Earth. In fact, you would be fine without a pressure suit, as this is roughly equivalent to the air pressure you would encounter at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. Nor would you need to insulate yourself as the temperature here ranges between 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. The atmosphere above this altitude is also dense enough to protect astronauts from ionizing radiation from space. The closer proximity of the sun provides an even greater abundance of available solar radiation than on Earth, which can be used to generate power, approximately 1.4 times greater. The conceptual airship would float around the planet, being blown by the wind. It could usefully be filled with a breathable gas mixture, such as oxygen and nitrogen, providing buoyancy. This is possible because breathable air is less dense than the Venetian atmosphere, and as a result would be, lifting, would be a lifting gas. The Venetian atmosphere, the Venusian atmosphere, I should say, not Venetian, Venusian atmosphere, is comprised of 97% carbon dioxide, about 3% nitrogen, and trace amounts of other gases. It famously contains a sprinkling of sulfuric acid, which forms dense clouds and is a major contributor to its visible brightness when viewed from Earth. In fact, the planet reflects some 75% of the light that falls onto it from the sun. This highly reflective cloud layer exists between 
45 kilometers and 65 kilometers, with a haze of sulfuric acid droplets underneath down to about 30 kilometers. As such, an airship design would need to be resistant to the corrosive effect of this acid. Luckily, we already have the technology required to overcome the problem of acidity. Several commercially available materials, including Teflon and a number of plastics, have a high acidity resist resistance and could be used for the outer envelope of the airship. Considering all these factors, conceivably you could go for a walk on a platform outside the airship, carrying only your air supply and wearing a chemical hazard suit. What about life on Venus? The surface of Venus has been mapped from orbit by radar on the U.S. Magellan mission. However, only a few locations on the surface have ever been visited by the series of Venera missions of Soviet probes in the late 1970s, and these probes returned the first and so far only images of the Venusian surface. Certainly surface conditions seem utterly inhospitable to any kind of life. The upper atmosphere is a different story, however. Certain kinds of extro extremophile organisms already exist on Earth, which could withstand the conditions in the atmosphere and the altitude at which havoc would fly. Species such as Acidanus infernus can be found in highly acidic volcanic lakes in Iceland and Italy. Airborne microbes have also been found to exist in Earth's clouds. None of this provides proves that life exists in the Venusian atmosphere, but it's a possibility that could be investigated by a mission like Havoc. The current climate conditions and composition of the atmosphere are the result of a runaway greenhouse effect, an extreme greenhouse effect that cannot be reversed, which transformed the planet from a hospitable Earth-like twin world of its early history. While we do not currently expect Earth to undergo a similarly extreme scenario, it does demonstrate that dramatic changes to a planetary climate can happen when certain physical conditions arise. By testing our current climate models using the extreme scene on Venus, we can more accurately determine how various climate forcing effects can lead to dramatic changes. Venus therefore provides us with a means to test the extremes of our current climate modeling with an inherent implications of ecological health for the ecological health of our own planet. We still know relatively little about Venus, despite it being our nearest planetary neighbor. Ultimately, learning how two very similar planets can have such different paths will help us understand the evolution of the solar system and perhaps even that of other star systems. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.